welcome to part three of the Wilton Bullet Vice restoration series. Now this is the final episode, so in this episode we're going to get it primed, painted up, and get it put back together, put it to work. So let's get to it. Well the first thing I did after the electrolysis process was go ahead and scrub everything up with a scotch bright pad. Then of course came the fun part, uh, masking off all of the machine surfaces that I didn't want to get any primer or paint on. Then I used a new product, new to me anyway, uh, U Paul's 1K self etching primer, acid number 8. Uh, it was recommended to me by a couple of friends who are in the body shop industry and um, I liked it pretty well. Uh, it's very pricey but uh, it worked very very well. I wasn't expecting the OD green color though. Now I'm using Hammerite Light Blue from the makers of Kills as you can see on the label there. Um, it's been basically agreed that um, Verde Green Rust-Oleum Hammered is very very close to the original color that Wilton put on these vices. But um, I wanted to change things up just a little bit and I couldn't find any Verde Green uh, Rust-Oleum and I didn't want to wait on shipping. So we have a light blue vice. Then of course after it was sprayed I went ahead and wired it up, hung it up in the shed and let it cure. Now as I mentioned in another video I had to drill out the pins and after talking with a gentleman at Wilton um, I really the only option I had was to go ahead and make my own out of 3 16 mild steel rod. That's what they recommended. And here all I'm doing is driving in the pin that I cut from that mild steel rod. Just driving it in until I can feel it from the inside of the nut. And of course I cut them too long on purpose, so a couple seconds with the cutoff wheel was all it needed to get rid of that extra length. And a few seconds with a 36 grit sanding disc. And I was able to sand it down nice and flush with the body. And with it all ground down nice and flush, you can't even tell that there's a pin in there. Now back to this um, Hammerite paint. Um, I'm used to applying paint uh, pretty quickly and in thin coats. And with the Hammerite, that's exactly what you don't want to do. Uh, you have to apply it pretty thick uh, and in fact you have to apply it to the point to where you think it's about ready to start dripping sagging and running because that's when it does that hammered effect uh, also with standard spray paint generally two to three coats is what you're looking for with the hammerite it's three to five coats With everything painted and the paint dry enough to handle, this is two days later, I went ahead and I chased the threads in the uh, fixed jaw with a quarter twenty tap. Now I'm not using any kind of lubricant because I'm not trying to cut new threads, I'm just cleaning out any gunk that uh, was left behind after the electrolysis. And of course I did the movable jaw as well. 
then with a very fine file, I went ahead and dressed up the areas uh, where the masking tape had been applied just to uh, get rid of any hard edge there and keep from chipping the paint again. Then it was time to assemble it, uh, starting with the uh, jaws. Now, the screw that I'm shaking at you right here <laughs> is to let you know that I've replaced the standard Phillips head screws with the, uh, the hex uh, socket head screws. And the same for the movable jaw. Then when it came time to grease the moving jaw and the spindle, turns out I was completely out of plain old axle grease. So that's all right. I went ahead and I used white lithium grease. It won't hurt it. And uh, in fact, it might even work a little better than uh, standard axle grease. And of course, you only discover that you need to move a bunch of things after you get your hands all covered in grease. And you can see the liberal coat I put on that uh, movable jaw. That should keep it from corroding. Then, of course, I'll lube up the spindle. And after all the questions and all the agonizing and uh, going back and forth about what kind of finish to put on the spindle, I decided finally to uh, take the suggestion to not do a thing to it. And uh, what I'll do down the road is uh, give it a coat of oil and just keep an eye on it. If it starts to corrode, sand it with an abrasive pad and throw a little bit more oil on it. Hey, what I'm pointing to there is to show that uh, I installed the spindle up to the point to where that slot lines up with the front of the body so I could drop that horseshoe washer into place and then screw it back down using some more socket head screws. Oh, you can get rid of the gloves now, Mark. There you go. Then with all that done, the last step is to try to smack that dust cap on with your hand, then realize you need a little bit of help with a mallet. And once that's driven on, then we check to make sure that it's in all the way and everything is sitting nice and flush. What we have is a new to us restored Wilton three and a half inch machinist vice. I'd like to thank Jonathan W. once again for giving me the opportunity to take on this project. Here's a before shot of the vice as I unpackaged it and here it is today. I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below to Jonathan's channel. If you haven't subscribed to him, please do. You'll enjoy it. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching this series. You all take care.